And the number one thing that came up was how to run a healthy meeting. And that's what our wonderful panel of talented individuals is going to show us. Okay, I'm going to give the mic over to Angelina. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Well, we thought in order to convey how to run a healthy meeting, we would do an abbreviated mock meeting. And to do that, is there anybody who's newer in the EA community here that would like to come up and just pretend to be our new guest for our new group here? Come on up. Stan? We got Stan? He's running. Thank you, Stan. You can sit here, and I am going to... I didn't know I was volunteering. Hi, Stan. <laughs> Hi, Stan. Hi, Stan. Welcome. Thank you. Glad you're here. Thank you. As I say, you can feel free to make a name tag, and you can use our copy of the EA Big Book and the Today Daily Meditation Guide for today's uh, meeting. And also here is a newcomer welcome packet for you. It has a variety of things in there that you find useful. Microphone. Microphone. Trying to multitask. There we go. Thank you. It contains the yellow pamphlet, pamphlet that you're going to need today. A welcome to a new way of life, how our meetings work, newcomer orientation, and our group phone list. Just so you're kind of understanding how our meetings work, uh, we'll start out with saying the serenity prayer, followed by a reading from the yellow pamphlet. We'll go through the entire pamphlet, so you'll need that today. A reading of the step of the week from our EA Big Book, followed by an opportunity to share your thoughts regarding the step, and a reading from the Today Daily Meditation Book. You can say pass if you do not feel like sharing. We'll touch base with you at the end of the meeting just to see how you're doing, and if there's anything you know, please let any of us know. We're just happy to have you here. Every one of us attended a 12-step meeting, and we know how it can be so intimidating your first time, so we just want to make sure that this is just a safe place for you and for all of us to just share and listen. Just in the essence of time, I'm not going to read from the suggested format for the EA meeting book. We're just going to fast forward through everything. But obviously, we read through, we do the serenity repair, repair we get to the end. And back up one of my pages. There we go. Fast forward to the end of the meeting. We just want to check in with you, Stan. How was your experience today? Are you doing all right? Life is good. No, it, Here we go. Well, it it's new, but it's not new because I was in Al-Anon for six years, and it's surprisingly close, just like Charlie said. Mm -hmm. Good. So I mean, I'm. I'm familiar with the steps and the traditions and the promises and all that stuff, mm. and I love it. But it this fits a lot better than my stuff, my things that were more focused on alcohol. Great. Thank you for sharing. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to mention that I can be your short-term contact for the next few months, and at that point you can choose to work with a sponsor if you choose. There are people who help you work the EA program through your program in your daily life. They're not obligated on any level, and we just want to know that your anonymity will be protected at all times. We just want to let you know that you're welcome, and we just hope that these meetings are worthwhile for you. We have books, obviously, available and lots of pamphlets to choose from if you're so inclined. And there's also the EA website, which has the full collection of all their literature to, you know, for you can purchase. Um, the website also has other meeting locations, if this location is not the best for you. And all that said, we are just welcome to have you here, and we hope to see you next week. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. I'm now going to turn it back over to Joyce. She has a wonderful demonstration to share. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'll do fine, Joyce. <laughs> and it has something to do with these three chairs. And I will let her turn it over to you, my dear. There you go. Thank you. And glad we had a new member tonight in our group. That's always great. We always uh, welcome new people. Can we push those a little closer? Does anybody know why these three chairs are sitting over here? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, what did it say? No. 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 Tell us. Do we need them up here? Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. These three chairs are very important. And you're going to find out by listening to my little spiel here about why these three chairs are very important. We all fit in them, just in different ways. This first chair represents a lot of the gray-haired people. Only my hairdresser knows. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you who um, have been in the program for a long time, I call you the veterans. I call you the 12-steppers. I might call you uh, the stability. The second one here is for the gray hair brunettes. <laughs> and you would represent, you've been here a while, you're participating in the meetings, you have questions, and you're searching, and you're growing. The next chair represents the new people the newcomers that we want to welcome into our group. And as Stan said, sometimes you'll find people that are in other programs and they come to our group and they um, see how they're related, they see how it can fit. We want to make sure that these people are welcomed. They are on a search for hope and they are hungry for newness, for hope. So this is very important. This could be the youth middle-aged or those that have been here a little while. This can be for senior citizens <laughs> or the, the ones that have had the knowledge of the program and want to share it. So going forward, you are all unique. We all want to grow and change. The future of our program really relies on each one of you, no matter what chair you sit in. If you are in the middle chair, you're kind of hungry for maybe learning from the person over here, you also can be somewhat of a mentor for this new person to make them feel welcomed. You in this chair are very important to us. It's important that you come. It's important that you keep filling the chair. That means that you're sharing, you're still getting involved, you are not becoming complacent because that doesn't help our program grow. We want the program to continue growing. This person on the side over here, the new person, we want to really outstand our hand to that person and make them feel welcome without overpowering them, of course, without bombarding them. But after the meeting, you're going to be saying hello and welcome and, and uh, find you can sense their comfort level and where we're at. So each one of us really does fit back into these chairs. It depends upon how you look at it. What's your part in making this program grow? Are you just going to stay the same? Or can you step out? Can you step out of your comfort zone and participate? We are so glad that these people come back all the time. And as I said, each one of you can sit in this chair and participate, whether it's in your local group it's in uh, the regional group, or extend it out to the uh, EA International group. So in order to keep our program going, we want you to continue to fill the chairs, and you do matter, you do matter when you come. We all learn something from our sharing and caring and reaching out. So thank you, um, keep coming back, and see if we can fill more chairs. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Joyce. <clears throat> we understand that meetings have basically two components. There's the structure of the program, of the group, excuse me, and then there's the human element side. And we will discuss each of them. And then after each segment, we're going to open it up to the floor and get your guys' opinion to see if you have any other thoughts or new ideas. And we will write them on the whiteboard after each segment. We will also discuss following those two things, uh, what makes groups not grow or fall apart, and new ideas for change and improvement. So Diana will start the first segment about meeting structure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
there's a lot of uh, parts of, of our meeting that are very important to keep the meetings structured and to keep people coming back. The first thing, like we demonstrated, was greeting and welcome, welcoming newcomers. Um, that's very important so that they feel welcome. One of the things that I remember the most is uh, coming to group was hugs and going to the retreat. It was first thing you walk in the door, you get a hug. And to me, that just made me feel warm and fuzzy. And uh, <laughs> that kept me coming back. And that's got to be part of our groups is to, to be welcoming. Mm -hmm. And then how many of you use the, the newcomer package, the literature that uh, Angelina talked about? Newcomer packets. Awesome. Mm -hmm. There's also um, bears. And who, someone purchased these bears? And our president. A lot. Oh, our president purchased these bears. And um, these are really <laughs> important also to share, share bears and, and to uh, hug. <laughs> so, um, the yellow pamphlet, for me, the yellow pamphlet was the, the main thing that um, I could grasp. I could read the yellow pamphlet and, and some of it could sink into my head when I started the group. The steps um, took me a long time. I'm a slow learning learner also and it took me a long time to actually start um, working the steps. But the yellow pamphlet with the, the slogans and, and the just for today's, I could start to to grasp some of that and, and start to practice that. Um, the formats, um, there's there's the old yellow format, it's usually on laminated paper, and there's also a bigger blue one that's laminated. And hopefully your groups are using those because it, it goes through all the steps, you know, and there, there's a lot of information on there to share with newcomers. And um, so that's real important. <coughs> We added on to, my, to ours, somebody laminated a little part, and we taped it on to ours that we ask if anyone has to leave early. And if they do, then we let them speak first after we do the reading, so that if they have something they want to share, they get an opportunity to do that. And it's very, for me, the new people in, in the first chair, they really helped me a lot to grow, plus the people that have been in the group a long time. They have a lot of wisdom to share, but the new people, it's like they say stuff that sounds profound to me, and I, and I keep growing from the new people also. And a lot of times I can also say, hmm, I used to think that way, or I used to behave that way. I have grown, and so new people inspire me that way also. Um, group contact, it's real important to have the group contact, the um, reaching out to people through the, the phone list is real important. When I started group, there was a gal that I called quite often in between groups and, and that really helped me a lot. I needed that. Um, and then the leader, the person that takes the meeting, and this was hard for me and it still can be sometimes, but we need to watch for people um, giving unsolicited feedback and, and crosstalk or getting way off the, the step or the subject and using the I language, you know, I feel this way, not, you know, you, 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 or that person, but to stay in the I, you know, talk about ourselves and, and how we feel. Um, types of meaning. What did these bears say? There used to be the bears that had all the slogans on them, and to have a, a meeting just on a slogan is another type of meeting, and that um, is something that my group did uh, occasionally, still does, and were one of the pamphlets. <laughs> I seem to gravitate right over there. <laughs> um, But there's a reason why we repeat the, the 12 steps over and over again. So we need to um, use that tool also to, um, unity. for unity. 
Okay, making sure someone takes responsibility to call the new folks is, is also important, especially if they haven't come for a while. It um, might let them know that we care and we'd like to see them again. And group leadership. I know for a long time my group, nobody wanted to lead, when there, especially when there's a lot of new people. But it is really important to have people take turns leading the meeting. Besides the fact that it helped to make me grow when I took a turn, it, um, it's good to, to share that responsibility. And, and then um, understanding group conscious is important in EA decisions concerning the group and group issues that need to be decided. Everyone should have a chance to, to vote or to voice their opinion. So if you have uh, an issue, um, the whole group should vote on it, and then the majority vote indicates the group conscience, and then the action should be taken. So, I'm gonna see if I can get over that way. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's a better Thank you, Diana. All right, we are going to open it up to you guys. Like I said, when I first started, I had put two copies because I didn't make enough, but if everyone can share, that's basically what Diana just read from, but that's a start. What have you guys seen and what would you like to add for new ideas? And Dave, if you want, you can write it on the board for any new topics. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Hi. People show up in very disturbed conditions. Like we've had people talking about suicide. And we've had people that look like they're about ready to murder people, too. <laughs> and they don't talk. And they make us very nervous. So I just wondered what you would say, what's the best thing to do about people like that? I'll open up to anybody if anyone would like to comment on that. Please go ahead. Um, I'm Andy from Rapsy, South Dakota. Um, in the group that I had started, which is now kind of fizzled, so I'm working on building that back up, but there is some people that are, you know, have suicidal ideations and some others that have some, some others that have some uh, challenges. And what I've done for our group is I actually have at the door a little basket that holds a list of contact numbers, emergency numbers, the suicide hotline number. Um, if anyone's familiar, 211 uh, is another good resource. And I also found, um, okay, thank you. Some others. <laughs> scare myself there. Um, some other um, support uh, numbers in the area hotlines and stuff like that, a behavioral health hotline, all of them within the whole state of South Dakota. So there's always someone there to reach out to if they need more than they're getting from the group itself. Does that help? I'll just stand up. I'm Zoe and I'm from the Minneapolis area here. Um, I I, a wonderful question. Thank you very much. I am one of those people who walks into a room looking either suicidal, more often homicidal. <laughs> and what I would say, would you please just love me, listen to me, accept me? That's the best thing you can do for someone who uh, is that intense. Uh, in their aspect or whatever you want to call it. Um, thank you for asking. Hi, my name is Rod. I'm from Toledo. And I just want to say that to uh, the gain awareness, um, I think it's important to pass out um, pamphlets to the psych ward. So that when somebody comes out of the psych ward, you know, they have somewhere to go for a support group. And um, a lot of people come 
some, some people don't stay, some people leave, but it's it's a good thing to do because it, it gets your uh, program out there and, and you know uh, and uh, kind of like endorses it. So thank Thanks. you. Thank you. We have time for Susan and one more, and then Bye. we can we'll go on to our next segment. We'll Oh, Sorry about that. <laughs> um, I'm Lloyd uh, Hi, from Hamley. Um, I was just going to uh, share an experience. Uh, when I first came in EA, this was about, it was probably 1980 uh, by then. Um, we had a uh, guy that came to uh, our meeting and he was talking about something, I don't remember what, uh, but he got up and started pacing back and forth and um, <clears throat> he was quite agi agitated and eventually uh, punched a hole in a uh, hollow door and um, and then sat down and um, the lady who had started the group um, was next and she just was you know <clears throat> most of us were kind of wide-eyed and everything. Uh, but the lady that had started the group and had been in EA for a long time was just very calm about it and, you know, just uh, explained that, you know, she used to be really angry too and through the, through the program she, you know, found better ways to handle her anger and uh, was very calm about it. And after she was done talking, she stood up and said, I want to give you a hug, and she gave him a hug, and it just completely disarmed him, and um, and that was the end of it. He wow. came a few more times, and then we never saw him again. But I think um, I think a good way to handle it is to talk about it and and to try not to react to it. A lot of times, I think um, you know people uh, use. In this case, I think he was using it at least as kind of a way to keep people away, you know. Uh, and it just didn't work in this case. And, and so that was the end of it. Thanks, Elijah. I was going to say, just in the essence of time, I was thinking another thing we can do, uh, Dave, afterwards. Maybe we can put up some blank sheets, and obviously we have that's me, I'll the thing again. You guys can add to it, write questions or other things that we can add and then write down because I know I would like to write some ideas down and take back with me as well. So we'll make sure we put up some blank uh, sheets on the wall and everyone can you know, add to it after lunch. I'm going to turn this off so I don't get on my other microphone. Switch. All right, we're going to switch to the next side of it, which is the human element. And, I'll get to my right. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop for a moment. Dave actually is gonna read a statement from a lady, her name was Michelle. She, was, it was, she wrote a beautiful statement about her first meeting experience, and it's, uh, it's pretty profound. So we'll turn it over to Dave here for a moment. This was a newcomer that had just been there a few weeks, and one of our other members asked her to write down her thoughts of her experience. And here's the story. My name is Michelle. I am powerless over my emotions and my life had become unmanageable. My first EA meeting struck me as odd and boring. We took turns reading from the helpful concepts, the 12 traditions, the 12 steps, and just for today. Slogans we use and the 12 promises. After the meeting, I started attending we read and shared about the step six. The reading was slow and tedious. I could have read all those things on my own in a quarter of the time. After the reading, we went around the table and each one of us shared our experiences about the step. No one interrupted. Everyone quietly and respectfully listened to each other. I felt peace calm, and a positive energy I'd never experienced before. The reading was, I'll try this word, meditative, and created the setting for our minds to quiet down in preparation for listening and learning. I enjoyed the peace 
and positive thoughts shared. I couldn't wait to attend the next meeting. I was shocked and very happy to have found a wonderful healing refuge. Thank you, Dave. Mm -hmm. All right, well, as we know, our literature is very mechanical. It tells us the how. But now that we understand the mechanics and the structure, the next segment is how, like the heart of how to run a healthy meeting. And in essence, how to get people to work a program. Joyce and Dave will present on this area. One of the first things on the human element, of course, is the contact, eye contact, the welcoming of people. Not just, you know, <laughs> or, yo, what's up? <laughs> what's happening? I think it's very important when you welcome someone that you also to kind of help them, not with the, with the new packages and so forth, but you're also kind of sun, hoping that some uh, other member will kind of mentor them as you go along, or at least assist or offer to, uh, just reassure them that they don't have to read if they don't want to, etc. So welcoming someone, and we're going to welcome somebody else now with a new bear, and I hope I can throw it without <laughs> tripping. Here we go! <laughs> when I first went to my when I went to my first meeting, this was six years ago, kind of had some of the same ideas that Michelle did, except I didn't find it boring and tedious. I really liked the reading. The reading from the blue book was, it just made a lot of sense to me. And I think I'm one of those rare people that from day one did not feel uncomfortable or out of place. I felt like I had a new home and one of the things that really struck me in the Apple Valley group was people talked about recovery. It wasn't a complaint session. It wasn't um, about self-pity. I mean, people were open and honest and focused on the recovery stories. And that was really uplifting for me. And I think that's really important for a healthy meeting. Frequently we see or hear the same person wanting to lead and they raise their hand and okay This is the next step you're going to be on and that's all fine and great, but it's also An awareness of who hasn't led We want to participate where we can where we feel comfortable and a couple of times on a personal level I've said hey Sid, I'll help you. I'll be there next to you so sometimes it takes another person to just ease over, uh, work together with somebody so that they can feel like they're participating. All right, so help, help a newcomer, help a person that's been there a while but doesn't feel quite comfortable. Hey, I'll do this part, maybe you can do this part. Would you read the Today book? You know, give a person a start, making them feel comfortable, warm, and welcome. Thank you. Keeping the, keeping the meeting on schedule and working through inappropriate behaviors. It's always a challenge. That's why it's handy to have these mid-timers and old-timers there that know how to handle these situations. And of course, even though the yellow laminated form that talks about structure says no crosstalk, occasionally you will have someone who will try to respond or especially a newcomer may want to do crosstalk. And usually it's you know, understanding the person may be sensitive, you just will gently remind them that there should be no crosstalk. There is one exception where we might want to interrupt a person, and that is if the person gets off topic and starts to talk too long. And I've seen in my group where somebody has very gently and effectively said to someone who was off topic, what does this have to do with step eight? excuse me for interrupting. And it got the person on track and finished his point and passed. So um, little challenges here and there, but having those skilled people who have been around really helps. I think Dave and I are gonna agree on the same topic here, um, how to help a person that's off track 
And like you said, you gently offer someone a little reminder. Um, you know, would you keep on point, or is there anything else you'd like to add to this step? And we've had people maybe that have got, gone offline by using language that's inappropriate. And up there again, the uh, majority kind of looks at each other and you kind of know, hmm, something's not feeling right here. And you can nudge this person too with a gentle reminder. And if that doesn't work during the meeting, if that's not appropriate, certainly talk to the person after the meeting and on a one-on-one -on -one conversation that, you know, we don't use swear words in the meeting and so on. Or um, you just read the play, so to speak. Where do you feel comfortable speaking to this person? What's their idea of coming to the meeting and sharing? But you don't want to hear all their garbage either. So keep in contact with the people. Keep it uh, informative. Keep it friendly. Of course, the most important part of meetings are the people. And um, sponsorship is a big topic at this particular convention, and fellowship, another big topic. After I'd been in the program for a year, year and a half, I was coming to the meetings you know, regularly, I hadn't hardly missed a week. But what about the other 167 hours during the week? Um, finally, one of the old timers invited me to breakfast, and I said, "Sure, Saturday morning breakfast. Let's get together and talk." And it's somebody I admired a lot already because I saw his serenity and I heard his recovery story, and I was very anxious to have breakfast with him. And um, my biggest strength is I'm interested in people. Uh, so I sometimes have trouble with boundaries because I started asking a lot of questions. How did you get here? I just kept asking on and on. I was so intrigued about his EA experience. And that's, um, so he, even though it wasn't a formal sponsor relationship, I, consider, I considered him my sponsor. And since then, we've continued to do breakfasts together and We'll talk more about this in the afternoon, but the sponsor, co-sponsor relationship, I have found has been critical for EA recovery. Let me grab the other microphone. No, no, go on. I've been needing to talk to you. I've been EA for a long time. Additional thoughts or comments about the human elements of meetings? I'll pass again around the microphone here. Hi, uh, I had a, a small group I had joined about 12 years ago in Minneapolis, and there was a, a lady there who was developmentally challenged. And she provided us with some of the greatest lessons in patience because we wanted her to be involved in, in the reading, but she had reading and speech impediments that could make listening to her read be actually kind of painful, because you wanted to help her, you wanted to help her, you wanted to help her, or you just wanted to say, I'll read it for you. But it was great to have that practice in patience and compassion every single time. And then when she was able to just share on her own, she was you know, well-spoken. So just knowing that, like Leroy was saying, there, you know, we all have limitations and so forth, but everybody, if you give them a chance, they can be teaching you something, and you can certainly give them a place to shine, too. Thanks, Ted. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Betty. I'm the Recovery Coach at Minneapolis Recovery box 
lots of index cards that people can take and fold in half, and everybody puts their name in front of them on the table. So we get to know each other's names, we can refer to each other by name, and when a newcomer comes, of course we give them a card and they put on their name, then everybody can pay attention to that person's name. So after the meeting, we can say, so glad you came, and include their name. Because I don't think there's anything that makes people feel as respected as having somebody refer to them with their correct name. And then the next week when they come and they walk in the door, we remember their name and we can say, hi, so glad you're back, and we can include their name. And I think that's really a good uh, little thing for our group. Another thing we have added to the structure of the group is right at the beginning we remind people to turn their cell phones off. And I think in our day and age that's just an essential. And the last thing is someone, something someone in our group brought up a couple of weeks ago, which I thought was such a fine idea. We have a group where sometimes six people show up, sometimes 24 people show up. And we never know in advance how many people it's going to be. And so sometimes uh, we set a certain number of chairs out around the table, and then uh, if we get a big group, we run out. And she said, well, we need to make sure that there's always an extra chair so that anyone who walks in the door, even if they come a little late, doesn't feel like, oh my gosh, this meeting isn't for me because there isn't a chair for me. And of course, quickly we get up and put in a chair, but it still makes the person feel like, Oh my gosh, I interrupted the meeting. They weren't prepared for me. I'm not really, uh, I shouldn't have come, okay? Because there was no chair for me. So I have made it my own personal thing. If we run out of chairs, to get up and put an extra chair at the table before the next person comes in. So we always have an extra chair at the table in case anyone walks in the door. I just wanted to share those things. Thank you. I'm Scott, and I wanted to share a couple of uh, observations. I hear how to run a large meeting. Um, um, I have a meeting where sometimes there's only one other person or two other people, and so some of the ideas work really well that you're suggesting. Try to remember their names. You're, it's just you and them, so you're going to remember their name. Um, I don't. I don't know how to uh, move beyond that, other than this contract language sometimes makes sense to me. Like. I know that you're the only other person here with me, and I'm the host tonight. Would you be willing to come back next week because maybe somebody else new will be here next week? I have seen so many one-timers, 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 and, and nobody really wants to be the only new person with the facilitator. And, uh, and I don't know how to get over that dynamic. If you have six people, you might have seven, eight, nine. If you have one person, you might have zero next week. And so that's just the reality with small stuff. Um, the other thing is we often will go months without a new person and we'll have three people there. And those three people don't want to say, and for the newcomer. Um, so what I've done uh, just randomly is I went through the uh, structured healthy meetings pack of those 13 uh, suggestions and I put parentheses around the areas where it says for the newcomer. And then the only uh, the way I can get the uh, regulars to stick with the structure, because sometimes they say, we don't need that structure, we know what the AA is all about, and then they don't practice the structure. And so I just say, read all the stuff except for what's in parentheses. And the second you see a newcomer there, read that part. I don't know if that makes sense for people, but sometimes in EA, I find that people emotionally troubled, they don't want to follow structure and healthy patterns, and suddenly it becomes whining anonymous instead of EA anonymous. No pass. Thanks. I was going to share too, I've only been in meetings that have, well like my current one, it's just me and the other person. And I, I'm kind of like that too, my, most, even at St. Paul, it was very small. So I, I, I got the privilege a couple weeks ago when I, um, when Charlie asked me to help with this facilitation of this meeting, I got to attend the Apple Valley. There was about 20 people. I, I, I mean, that was Woo! very, yeah. I mean, was, yeah, I mean, yeah, all these fine folks I got to meet. And, but it, like you said, the dynamics are so different from a very small group to 20 some people sharing and offering suggestions. And it's just, it's kind of fun seeing both sides of it. But I was looking for my notes and I can't seem to find it, but Charlie, you might be able to answer this. So for instance, like 
Scott or myself, who are just in a very small one and two other people, isn't it like the one person? Okay, so I started a group. Here's my newcomer packet, my EA meeting guide, and I got all my little stuff that I spent $25 on. But isn't someone also supposed to be a treasurer or like the second hand person? So, I mean, it's nice, maybe you encourage someone, like you said, especially like in your situation too, you only have one person coming through. Say, like, hey, maybe empower them. Say, you know, we'd love you to have you here, and you're the treasurer. <laughs> Welcome. I don't know. You know, come up with something silly. But, you know, kind of for me too, even with reading. I don't know, maybe it was like the second or third time coming to the EA meetings at the East St. Paul, once again, being small. Angelina, you can be the leader. I'm like, me? I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, but you read the format and off you go. And, you know, it's empowering. So it's very empowering. Yeah, more over here. Mm -hmm, of course. Um, what's, mm -hmm. what's implied by everyone's questions about the small groups is, how do we get more members? Uh, yeah. What are some good, skillful tactics for getting new people to come? And so what I know from uh, building new groups in other programs that I've worked is, is that we can take our program materials and bring them to a few key useful places. One of them, the most obvious, the most easy, is to bring them to other 12-step groups and to say, this is a program for uh, a second stage kind of recovery. Uh, Joyce, you're holding up something? Oh, the, the packets. And uh, uh, a, second, a second way to place to bring them is to um, uh, professionals uh, to bring them to people that are uh, working with people that are, are troubled that might refer uh, people to our group and so uh, uh, Joyce has just made aware that we have these handy cards that you can buy while you're here uh, from the office that are uh, uh, from the other free excuse me that are uh, easy quick overviews about the program and now Sharon I'm Sharon. I'm powerless over my emotions. Um, we're brand new to EA in Topeka, Kansas. We've been going for two years. And what has developed is a very nice pattern for us. We do read from the yellow pamphlet, but we always read the steps. Then the rest of it is broken down into second week, third week, fourth week, fifth week. And then after we read the steps and then whatever that next week is, we stop and we say, is anything jumping out at you? So we may have a little conversation, it doesn't matter how long it takes, it's people's individual responses to whatever the step was or whatever, was it traditions, concepts, uh, promises, it, it really doesn't matter. We've had some of the most beautiful meetings and never really gotten to a topic. One thing that I think that we've really struggled with is the freaking out around no crosstalk. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, codependent, boop, boop, boop. Because it's just like, oh, they just, they want to respond to everything that everybody says. Our way to bring balance to that is to very gently say, that's crosstalk. And explain to them, we, we close the meeting at a quarter of one. We'd go to noon to one. We tell them in the beginning we will close the meeting. We read the closing at a quarter till. Then we have 15 minutes of conversation. It needs to stay around EA, emotions, steps, doesn't matter. It stays in EA, but there's a freedom. There's a freedom there. And I think that has worked very nicely. And usually if somebody's been in the program says, this is hard. This is counterculture to not do crosstalk. But one of the things that this, we especially have a, a woman in our group, she'll say, this was the one thing that made me not want to stay in EA. This is the one thing that has kept me in EA. And the, the, what the wisdom of no crosstalk takes a while to grow on you, but it's one of the greatest gifts. It's one, of, I have to tell you, I'm an oldest, I was uh, over 10 years old taking care of six siblings, and I have to tell you, I do guilt every time I go, hmm, you know, cross talk, we'll, we'll, we'll open the meeting at a quarter till. That's very hard for me. I have also felt sometimes that people didn't come back because of my watch, being careful about the structure of the meeting, but we're always kind. And the rest of the group has picked up responsibility for that, and that helps, and we rotate the meeting for for the whole month. So anyway, that's kind of something we knew because we didn't know what the hell we were doing, but it's working out very nicely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
in the essence of time, I did this quarter after 12. Um, I know we have two more segments. I was just wondering, maybe we can just read through those quickly and then we'll just maybe put the posters up and then we can, because I know lunch is, we do. I just want to make sure our, for the box lunch, because I know that was supposed to be at noon, are they expecting us somewhere to be, because it's 10 after right now. In the bathroom, people who have pre-ordered their lunches. Okay. Which room? Oh, the back of this room. All right, is everyone okay going another maybe 10 where, minutes? Would that be acceptable? Lunches. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm going to turn it over Just to you. Know, <laughs> there's going to be five more minutes of, of announcements after that. So okay, so is 15 minutes okay? We'll try if we can just read quick and then. He's got some. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, who, who is Ron? Ron. Ron. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, right. Yep. Well, my name is Ron, and I'm powerless over my emotions. All right. All right. All right. Two things in the yellow format. What is it? The, it says, uh, at our meetings, we use first names only. If we have newcomers, we stop at that point and say, let's go around the table and introduce ourselves. Second thing, when we get to the line that says, are there any volunteers to lead next, will someone volunteer to lead next week? Someone like myself will say jokingly, all you have to do <coughs> is know how to read. You don't have to be a leader. You just have to read the format. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't I, I'm not a member of this organization. I think it's amazing. This is the first time I've this. It's <laughs> <laughs> real. It's real. <laughs> no, I'm a first timer here coming to these meetings, and I think this is awesome what you guys are doing here. Charlie introduced me to a program called Boys to Men when I was young and they create a very similar environment for people to come and share what is current in their life and what is kind of dragging, for youth, what is dragging them down and giving them a space to be open and giving them a space to share what's happening. And I think in, in an organization like EA, where you have people of all different ages, all different dem like social demographics, all different places all around the world, it's so important to meet people where they're at, wherever that is. And giving that space, because organization, that's what thats what gives you that availability to have the structure, the fact that you have a meeting, that people have come together and they say, yeah, we do share these common things. But having a place for those people who do come and who do identify to bring what is what is true to them to that, that's really, really, really important. Thank you. Thank you. We just have two more segments. And like I said, maybe we can just read through them quickly. It's what makes groups not grow or fall apart. And the other one, which I think we probably should talk about a little bit, maybe I'll open it up to the group afterwards, is ideas for change and improvement. So once again, I will um, turn it over to Joyce and Dave. And I'll let you guys. Why don't you just go ahead and read them? And then, I mean, we're sure. Yeah, let share. Dave stay up there. And we can just read through them. What makes not grow? OK, our, our section here is what makes a group not grow or, what is, fall apart. or fall apart okay people not feeling welcome that might be one thing or they don't belong two is fear of belonging feeling not connected they're different and three is not working the program people not working the program they only come for socialization they just show up and say hi and then they leave. They, they don't really feel a connection to work the program. All right, four would be people seem afraid to work the program. As a result, they don't share and they don't come back. Five is not enough rotation among members or responsibilities. Only one or two people lead or do all the work of setting up uh, the business side of the meeting, paying the rent, etc. So we want to make sure that we continue to offer opportunities for other people. The last one on some reasons we think that uh, programs don't grow is making sure that the meeting is always held. Now I know we have real faithful people, like one or two people, and they are there regardless if one person shows up or if 10 or 15 or more show up. So there's probably other things we could suggest of why programs don't grow, but I think uh, we have some new tools that are bringing forward, such as these cards and other opportunities with the new network that's being um, invented. Okay, ideas for changes or improvement. 
if the meeting gets boring, how can you make it uh, more positive, make it more inventive? You might have suggestion themes, topics you want to bring up, and you would share that, okay, next week I can, we're going to share a little bit more about fear or anger or whatever the discussion is. Bring it up to the group. What would you like to add to our discussion next week so that they know what's coming? Um, anything else you want to add? Um, I think it's already been said, like uh, um, having a meeting on one of the brochures, reading from it and sharing on that topic, um, just to um, keep people coming back, um, especially if your group, if, when you do have a lot of people who are regulars, you know, just to give it a little change once in a while. And then what my group does is we take uh, every week now, we do the step from the big dark blue book, but we also read a section from It Works If You Work It. And we found that's real helpful because some of the new people can't really get into the step, but they, the It Works If You Work It kind of tells you how to work it, and they can relate to that a little bit better. So we do that in my group. Um, and then we got um, inviting individuals from other groups to speak. If you have someone come to your group that's uh, been in the 12-step program, maybe that would like to share. Um, and ask if the time and location of the meeting is working for everyone. Maybe, I know at our group, we um, changed it from 6.30 to 7, and that was more successful. And then fellowship outside the meeting. If uh, Our group used to go to McDonald's and have coffee after the meetings, and it, that doesn't happen anymore, but it did at that time, and sometimes that really helps a lot. On the location, too, make sure it's a safe place. They've got good lighting. Uh, make sure that if um, they're, it's too dark or something, maybe you walk, and for sure you're walking out as a group, you're walking with someone, make sure that the uh, parking lot is safe and comfortable. Angelina? Sure. I'll turn it, I'll open it up back to you guys in a few moments, but just before we close here, I just want to let you know, I know the uh, service center, there's a table, it has a couple different guides. One of them is the guide for new and existing EA groups and a key to successful groups. I found these to be very interesting and especially to help grow a group. It had some good ideas, I thought. And the other thing too, like I mentioned from our copies of our handout, I'll leave this up here over lunchtime hour. Feel free to leave your email address and I can send you electronically our notes if you would like. And then, what else did I have for you guys? Um, you know, one thing I was going to ask, maybe Sid can comment, isn't there a new app coming out on... Who? You're talking about technology. Technology! Because <laughs> 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 I was going to say, isn't, that, isn't there a lot of additional stuff like on there that's going to be more accessible for learning about groups or just give new ideas and techniques and places for us to share kind of like this instead of this writing here how can we disseminate this information to everybody else on the planet so all right and um i will open it up if anyone else has some additional things they would like to share about growth and ideas for change and there's one there oh. who has the microphone yeah oh there we go yeah i'd like to try it out thanks My name is Michael, and I'm a grateful member of EA from uh, Washington, D.C. One, one thing that might be helpful for this in EA that I haven't seen, I was a lifelong member of Al-Anon, and you know, there were these very structured people, and they would always try to tell me what to do. And one thing that I hated that they said is, you know, we should have traditions meetings. And I... I that, that infuriated me, but it has been one of the greatest things because traditions are terrifically spiritual. And these women had the nerve to disrupt all my favorite meetings with a monthly tradition. And those are some of the best meetings that I've ever been to. And those meetings are really strong and they grow. 
and you know they take group inventories and and there's always someone that will tell you when you're doing something wrong there and it's it's fantastic for me to get a gentle nudge like that from people so that's just something to suggest that's a great that's a great Hi, my name is Steve. I'm powerless over my emotions. Hi, Steve. Hi, everybody. I'm grateful to be here. Um, I just wanted to add to, as far as uh, growing groups, um, I learned in my dog training class that when you have a dog on a leash, he can feel what you're feeling. And if I'm feeling anxious, he's going to feel anxious. So when it comes to newcomers, I've learned to let go and let God. I pray to God for newcomers, and I allow him to uh, grow the meetings. And right after the serenity prayer, because um, our ultimate authority is our higher power, right after the serenity prayer, I say, I commit this meeting into your hands. And it's been effective for me. Thank um, Oh, um, I had a thought in my head this morning I just wanted to share with everybody. Um, I'm from uh, around Gainesville, Georgia, and it's about a thousand, a thousand miles, and uh, it was a long ride up here. Um, I felt some anxiety coming up here because it was uh, unknown, and uh, I, the thought that came to my mind is that no matter where I am, I'm always in the same place. I'm in God's heart and on his mind. I pass. Amen. My name's Paul, and I'm powerless over my emotions. Uh, one of the things I'm reminded of as I think about healthy meetings is the fact that uh, uh, a church has no place for sinners. And we uh, have reduced our membership in churches and organizations uh, down to very small percentages. And what we've become over the years, I think we're a poor place for sick people. And our meetings, our meetings are for sick people. That's what we're about. And yes, that's going to be uncomfortable. But that's the joy of new people coming in and finding hope and recovery. Because that's what we are. One person sharing with another person their recovery. And that includes both the good and bad of who you are. And the more we do that, the more we become a place, rather than a, a place of rules and regulation, we become a place where sick people can come and be loved. And as we do that, we will grow. But right now we can't grow because we're caught up in a bunch of bullshit. And the bullshit will disappear when our heart starts softening. Thank you, everyone.